So we're almost there. All we're going to do now is just add the ability for us to delete these activities or delete an ind individual activity. And we're going to add that functionality now. So let's head back to our app.tsx component. And what we want to do is just add yet another handler inside here. And we're going to say handle delete activity. And this is going to take an activity ID as a parameter, and this is going to be a string. And what we want to do is just say set activities. And again, we'll just use the array filter method to do this. And we'll spread our activities across this. So we create a new array from this. And we'll say activity.filter. And then in the expression, we'll say the activity ID is equal to the ID we're passing in as a parameter. And in fact, this should be not equal to the ID because we want to return all of the other activities that do not match the ID that we're passing in as a string here. And then what we're going to do is pass this particular handler down to our activity list and add a delete button into that so that we can delete the selected activities. So down in the activity dashboard, let's add yet another property. And this one's going to be to delete an activity. And we'll just say handle delete activity. And over in our activity dashboard, once again, we'll add yet another property in here as well. Same thing again, delete activity. It's going to take the ID as a string. And we return void from this. And then we can just add our new delete activity to this, our destructured props. And then we can pass it on down to our activity list. So I'll say delete activity equals delete activity and just reformat. And then I'm just going to copy our delete activity property from our interface and open the activity list. And once again, just add this as a prop to our interface, add it to our destructured props. And then in our activity list, all I'm going to do is just copy the button inside here and paste it below. And all I'm going to do is just change the color to red. The content will be delete. And instead of select activity, we'll just say delete activity. In this case, and this is all we need to do. So we should be able to go across to our activity list and we should literally be able to delete activities. And if I click on the delete button, sure enough, we can delete the activities from our activity list. And we can wipe them all out, but a quick refresh will get them all back because we're not persisting our data at this point. So a pretty long section, but what we've got now is a complete CRUD application in our React client-side application. The only thing we haven't done yet is hooked this up to our API so that we can actually create, update, and delete our activities. All we can do at the moment is just get a, a list of our activities from our API, and we haven't done anything to persist our changes back to our API. And we'll start to take a look at that next. But because we've reached the end of this particular section, let's just take the opportunity to take a look at our console and see if there's any warnings or console logs that we can clean up before we save our changes into source control. And I've got a couple of warnings in here. In my activity dashboard, I've got list is defined but never used. And in the activity details, I've got an icon that's been imported and never used. So I'm just going to clean those up. And in the activity dashboard, I can just remove the list from inside here, from this import. And in the activity details, I'll just open that. And I have the icon imported here that's not in use. And if I save these changes and just refresh the page, I should find that the console is nice and clean and making changes should not change any of that and the console is still clean. So that's good. And what we want to do now is just save our changes into source control, quite a few in this particular section. And what I'm going to do is stage the changes 
and then just say end of section five and commit these and then push these changes up to GitHub. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at a summary of what we've covered in this particular section and then we'll move on to persisting our data back into our API.